After household water disappears down your drain, it embarks on an amazing journey. And then it is sent to quench the North Bay's thirst for power in the form of electricity. Steady. First day, looks good. Lower alarm for uh, shutting it down. There's people working at this facility all the time. On Christmas Day, the operator is making sure that when you're having your Christmas feast, that you don't have to worry about whether the water's being taken care of or not. And I am in charge of those people or responsible for them, and so I feel responsible to make sure that if there's a problem in the system, that I'm on call to be aware of that. I am the Deputy Director of Operations for the Utilities Department. We have two of us. One of us is in charge of the sub-regional system, that's me. Another person is in charge of the local system, that's the person that makes sure that the water is delivered to your house and the wastewater is taken away after you're done using the water. Once it's taken away, it becomes my responsibility to do something with it. So my job is to take the wastewater, treat it, and recycle it and dispose of it in an environmentally sensitive way. And now, in this day and age, we also are seeing that there's not going to be enough water in the future, fresh water, if we don't recycle. We have the technology, we have the science to do. There is no reason to just use it once and throw it away. The treatment process here is what's called tertiary treatment. It's the highest level of treatment recognized by the California Department of Health Services. And we've gotten rid of chlorine gas as a disinfection process, and we're the first in California to have a system that relied completely on ultraviolet light. The water now can be used on any type of food crops, could be put in a swimming pool, uh, can be used with public contact. We are treating wastewater, and wastewater is 99% water and 1% other. And what we're trying to do is separate those two things make sure they're safe, and then try to recycle everything. And in the 1990s, we built the first compost facility using the solids removed from the wastewater, mixing it with the yard waste collected in your curbside recycling bin, and turning in a product that we could then market. And we were the first in California to have a facility like the one at the Laguna plant. Now we recycle virtually 100% of the solids that come out of our water. We recycle 100% of the water we produce. And we take the solids that we remove from the water and create one third of the power that we need at the plant to do this process. One third of our power is methane gas generated in digesters at the plant from the solids removed from the water. What attracted me to this field, specifically wastewater treatment and recycling, was that those sciences are all right here at the plant. Uh, chemistry, biology, mathematics, physics, all of those things go into what we do every single day at the plant. When I first started with the utilities department, I was tasked with upgrading the plant for both additional capacity since Santa Rosa was growing rapidly and second to upgrade the process to a better process and then even more than that what happened with the water after we had got it to that level that we could reuse it. The projects that I was working with were expansion of our agricultural reuse system, expansion of the disposal system to make sure when we had to dispose it could be done safely, and then probably the biggest project or the one that really made the system complete was the Geysers Recharge Project that found a use for this recycled water at the time of year when the other users we had, farmers and urban users, didn't need it and that would be in the middle of the winter. The geysers were a perfect fit for our system to continue our history of recycling and to minimize the amount that we couldn't recycle and had to dispose of to the river. The arrangement with Calpine is very unusual in that it is a public-private partnership. They had to trust us, we had to trust them. We had to be concerned, are they going to stay in business? They had to be concerned that we can meet our commitments if they were going to capitalize the parts of the project they had to build and the power to pump our water up the hill. The project to build that pipeline up there was challenging because 
we literally had a pipeline 41 miles long that had neighbors on each side of it every step of the way. And so we had to work with each of those property owners to understand their needs. And we had to determine a way to make sure we could put that pipe through that road and up that hill and yet take care of all these varying interests. Over 50% of the geothermal energy harnessed in the world comes right from the steam fields in northern Sonoma County. And that steam is easily harnessed to make power in mining that steam, they were reducing the water to the point where it was not going to be viable in the near future without a new source of water. We had water, they needed it, and now it looks like it will last uh, indefinitely as opposed to having a finite life. It just makes sense to continue to push that envelope to recycle it in more ways and in more quantities, not just in Santa Rosa, but really throughout the world at this point. The entire cycle that wastewater makes takes only 33 hours to complete. Take a virtual tour of the Laguna Treatment Plant when you click on Utilities Department at www.srcity.org. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time on Snapshots, the show that brings you the small stories that make Sonoma County big in the best way.